Hi, and thanks for checking out Next Level Carpentry. In this video, I'm going to show how to cut a straight edge on a crooked board like this by using a simple fixture and a job site table saw. It's a great method because it allows you to salvage boards that are otherwise too crooked to frame with. And with a straight edge to work from, you can make accurate furring strips and save the nice straight lumber for other places where you really need it. The process is simple and straightforward, but it won't get done by itself. So let's go to work. The process for straightening crooked lumber in a cabinet shop position is pretty simple. In a few seconds, I can run a crooked board over a joiner and have an edge that's arrow straight to work from. But it's just not practical to haul this kind of equipment around on a job site. So I brought my DeWalt portable saw into the shop to show how you can get this done on job site conditions. I think the bow on this piece of wood will show up in the camera. And the cool thing about this method is it doesn't really matter how much of a bow is in the board. This process will straighten it out. I will mention though, if there's very much twist into the board combined with the bow, that lumber should probably go into the fireplace and not into the job. A twisted board is dangerous to cut on a job site without the ability to flatten it first. So that's a whole nother subject. And it's kind of ironic that for a video where I'm showing how to cut a bowed board, I couldn't come up with a board that was bowed more than this to make a better example for the video. So I'm just going to straighten this one so you can see how it works. The first thing you need for cutting the bow out of a crooked board is a straight edge to work from. On a job site, the best thing to have is a factory edge from a piece of sheet goods. For this example, I'm going to use this edge rip from a sheet of 3 quarter inch OSB. The factory paint tells me that this edge is still arrow straight and I've run it through the table saw so that the other edge is straight and parallel to the first edge. Having good equipment that's set up well with sharp blades is typical for next level carpentry. Make sure that you've got a good blade in your table saw and that the rib fence is parallel to the slots and parallel to the blade because it's essential that when the work is fed through here that you get a clean straight cut. If the cut wanders because the fence is off or the blade is dull, you're just not going to get the results we're after. The other thing that's essential for doing this particular process safely is a good roller stand and or a reliable helper to catch the work as it's fed through the table saw. I'm relying on a roller stand because I gave Chip the day off. Once the essentials are covered, I'll just add some blocks to the straight edge to make the process more accurate, consistent, and safe. Plywood is the best material to use for this push block because of the way the blade cuts through it in the straightening process. So I'm just taking a scrap of three quarter inch plywood and I'll cut a strip two and a quarter inches wide. Next, I need to screw the three quarter inch push block to the end of the straight edge. But in this case, because it's OSB and it would be the same for using plywood, if I attempt to screw this on, the screws are just going to split the end of the straight edge and the block won't have any strength to it. So first I'll screw a piece of 2x4 to the straight edge and then screw the push block to the 2x4. Because I want a crisp square edge on the 2x4 for attaching the push block, I'll run a scrap through the table saw to clean up the edges. With straight edges on the 2x4, I'll square up one end and cut the block to the width of the straight edge. It's essential that the 2x4 block not stick past either edge of the straight edge and that the one side of it is flush with the end of the straight edge. I hope I said that right. With the 2x4 block secured to the straight edge, now I can screw the plywood push block to that 2x4. Again, it's important that the edge of the push block not stick past the edge of the straight edge on the side and it can't hang down past the bottom. It has to be flush on the bottom 
and on the side. And in my opinion, you cannot beat a snappy bit for pilot holes on countersunk head screws. With the push block attached, this assembly feeds smoothly onto the table saw. With a push block in place, technically this is all that's needed to cut a straight edge on a bowed board. And I'm not proud of the fact that there's times when I stop here and cut a straight edge on a 2x4 and keep moving. But that goes directly against my principles for working safe. There's no crooked board worth saving, there's no project worth doing that's worth getting cut to save a few minutes in setup time. So next I'll add some hold down blocks to this fixture that really increase the safety factor. Here again, I'll use plywood for these hold down blocks because they won't split when I'm putting them on or when the fixture is in use. In this case, the piece I'm straightening is an inch and a half thick. My straight edge is three quarters of an inch thick. So I've got a three quarter inch block to attach to the straight edge that makes the top of the block and the top of the workpiece flush. I'll add two hold down blocks, one near each end of the piece I'm working on. The one at the push end can always stay in place, but the other one could be moved depending on the length of the piece being cut and straightened. I already have pilot holes on these blocks, so it's just a matter of screwing them down. And it's important here that the edge of this attachment block is either flush with the side of the straight edge or back from the edge a little bit. Anything but sticking over. I put two screws in this piece so that it doesn't pivot. With those base blocks in place, I'll attach a second block to the top that'll work as the actual hold down. Now that these hold down blocks are attached to the straight edge, the fixture's complete. The next step is to attach the bowed piece to the straight edge cutting fixture. It's essential that the bowed workpiece bow away from the straight edge. Eyeball the workpiece to determine which edge is bowed out. I like to put a mark on it so I don't lose track. Sometimes the workpiece actually has an S curve to it. And in that case, like this case, it's essential that just two points on the crooked piece index to the straight edge. Here's where I wish I had a board that had more of a bow in it to explain this. But if I put the bowed edge of the workpiece towards the straight edge, you can see how it rocks and it's less stable feeding it through. So remember, the piece always bows out away from the straight edge. To attach the workpiece, it's just a matter of putting the, the bowed edge out away from the straight edge, sliding the workpiece under the hold down blocks, and bumping it into the push fence. And then driving in the hold down screws to secure the workpiece to the straight edge for cutting. You can see in this angle shot that there's only about an eighth of an inch bow in this workpiece, but the setup for cutting a board with any amount of bow in it is the same. I've seen videos showing other types of edge straightening fixtures on YouTube, but most of those are geared towards doing this in a shop situation. It consists of putting the workpiece on top of the straight edge, clamping it down with clamps to hold the workpiece down on top of the straight edge. And there's nothing wrong with that system. I've used it plenty of times in the shop, but I like this setup and this method for job site conditions because the blade only has to be set to the height of the workpiece. If I was to put this two by four on top of the workpiece, the blade would have to be set to about two and three eighths to cut through it. You got more exposed blade. I just don't like it. This keeps everything low profile for a nice clean straight cut. It's very repeatable and sustainable. You can use the same fixture for straightening a crooked two by eight or a two by 12, all those sorts of things. Plus it's easy to set up for pieces up to eight feet long. You can extend this a little bit if necessary. So it just makes for a great job site fixture for straightening boards when you don't have a joiner or some other equipment for doing the straightening. The biggest safety factor that I'm not dealing with here in the shop is typical job site conditions. So when using this setup on a job site, make sure that you have a flat work surface. It's not slippery, there's nothing to trip over, and it's not wet or any other condition that would distract you from working safely with the table saw. Once the bowed board is attached to the straight edge, measure the combined width of the straight edge and the workpiece. And in this case, I've got eight and five sixteenths of an inch. I want to cut off this rounded 
corner as well as straighten the board. So I'm going to set the fence at 8 and 3 sixteenths so that I have a straight even cut over the whole length of the workpiece. Raise the blade so that the teeth are about an eighth inch above the workpiece. Set the fence to the 8 and 3 sixteenths that I measured and make the cut. And the off-cut piece pretty much tells the story of the bow and the board. It's a bit over an eighth inch thick in the middle and nothing on each end for all intents and purposes. And now you can see that one edge of this 2x4 is arrow straight, making an excellent edge to work from for cutting furring strips or whatever. Well, after filming and editing this whole video, I decided it would be more instructive to get a board with a more visible bow in it and show how to cut it as well. So I went down to the big box lumber yard and found the rack I picked over 2x4s. You know the one I'm talking about, right? Everything in the rack is crooked as a bucket of snakes. So picking through the rack didn't take long to come up with this gem. But I did have to wrestle with a guy who's building the boat and wanted this for the keel. Anyways, I'll go through those steps again real quickly here so you can see how well the process works with a board that's more visibly bowed. First, I relocate one of the hold downs closer to the end of the straight edge to handle the eight foot board. And then secure it with the hold down screws just like before. Next, I'll double check the combined width and decide to go with eight and three sixteenths on this board also. I set the rip fence to that measurement and reposition the outfeed roller stand to catch a longer board. Then with everything set up, I make the cut in the same manner as before. And as always, the offcut tells the story of the bow in the board. This one is a good half inch bow at the one kink spot in the board. And in a handheld shot, you can see the straightness of the board after the cut is made. And the bow is quite obvious with the gap between the bowed edge and the straight edge. I'll just make a quick comment about cutting boards that are really warped. And that is that boards get warped by tension built up in the wood during the drying process and from the, the way the tree grew. And they dry to a state where that tension's in equilibrium and it holds the bow in the board. So when you cut a big piece off of it, it changes the equilibrium of that tension in the board and sometimes the board will just bow again. You can make a second cut and a third, but some boards are just hopeless. And all you really do is lengthen their trip between the job site and the dumpster. But I'm glad that in this case, the board was dry and stable so that cutting off a piece even this wide didn't change the equilibrium enough to re-bow the board. So now that you've seen how effective this process is for longer boards with bigger bows in them, I'll just revert back to the rest of the video that I filmed using that other shorter, straighter board. With one edge of the board straight, I just remove the fixture and set it aside and reset the fence to the narrowest part of the board. In this case, I'm going to go three and one eight. And you can see that the scraps from this edge of the board are basically the inverse of the scrap from the other side. And that the piece is straight and true on both sides, just like that. Well, that pretty well covers the method I use for cutting a straight edge on bowed boards using a simple fixture and a job site table saw. I hope that you find this method valuable like I do. It's a great method to know when doing remodeling projects because so many non-typical size pieces are needed for all the conditions you run into. I'll include links at the end of this video for two other related videos. One of them is a review of a tool called the How Far Out Gauge by FastCap. It installs to the end of a four foot level and by turning a brass knob will give a precise reading about how far out of level or plumb a surface is. The other video shows how to use that measurement taken from a level with a How Far Out Gauge to cut what I call super shims from a straight piece of lumber. And all three videos add up to a set of tricks that I find indispensable while doing remodeling projects because you encounter so many surfaces that are a little or a lot out of plumb and have to be dealt with to make the remodeling project turn out the way it should. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you'll check out the other two to add these methods to your bag of tricks. I hope you'll hit that thumbs up button because that adds momentum to the Next Level Carpentry channel. Although it's probably not apparent, I really work hard to improve the quality of videos here at Next Level Carpentry. I've said often in the comments that the video work is a whole lot harder than the carpentry work. But I hope the content will make you glad you subscribed or will encourage you to subscribe after seeing this video. And please feel free to join the discussion, comment on the video, and stay tuned to Next Level Carpentry for more. And again, there will be links to those two related videos over here at the end of this video. And from the Next Level Carpentry Shop, thanks for watching.